it's not necessarily what you play, it's how you play it. Hey guys, Sully here with 7th Rise. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, welcome to lesson number two with the Drum Corner, uh, presented by Rock and Roll Industries Magazine. Uh, today we're going to be going over a lot of uh, really cool ideas, warm-up ideas, some drum fill ideas, and uh, so sit down, uh, get comfortable, get out a notepad, take some notes. It's going to be an action-packed uh, lesson. Looking forward to it. Thanks. All right, guys, here we go. Uh, starting the lesson off today, we're going to be hitting a couple different sections today. Um, what I want to start with is my idea of a good warm-up routine. Uh, when you sit down to practice, rehearse with either yourself or the band, if you're by yourself, or if you got the band coming, maybe you show up a couple minutes early, half hour early to get yourself warmed up. There's a couple routines that I've used throughout the years that have really helped that. Uh, serves two purposes. One, it warms your body up and gets you kind of centered on the drum kit and gets you in that frame of mind. And then secondly, um, I use it to help improve some weak spots. You know, a lot of times drummers will, I've seen it happen, I did it, concentrate a lot on your hands and kind of neglect the foot possibly. So I came up with a, it's a real basic pattern, but it helps. Um, you know, work with your timekeeping applications. It helps uh, kind of, like I said before, get in groove with the drum kit and with the job at hand for the day. And also it helps uh, work um, on the foot pedal uh, with your main kick. I know we have a double bass uh, set up here today, but uh, we're just going to concentrate on the, the main kick, which would be my right kick today. Uh, the pattern is just a 4 4 pattern. Well, we're going to be doing straight eighth notes uh, on the bottom end with the kick drum. Uh, we're going to be doing quarter notes on the hi-hat, one, two, three, four, then on the two and four we're going to be hitting the snare. So, um, and this will work on some independence as well because you got uh, the foot doing something completely opposite of, of your hand and so on and so forth. So, um, and with that I like to spice it up a little bit, throw in some upbeat snare uh, and hi-hat, you know, kind of accents. Again, most music is, uh, well all music is based on or written with the idea that there's a downbeat and an upbeat. And so, normally when you're tapping your foot to a song, that's going to be the downbeat. The upbeat is when your foot is coming up. So, uh, what can really spice up a drum pattern or a drum feel is possibly hit, hitting something on the upbeat. And uh, you'll see in this pattern I'm going to play for you that uh, there's a couple times where I'll do uh, some upbeat snare hits with a hi-hat. For the most part, I keep the hi-hat pretty well tight and closed. On these particular accents, I open it while hitting the snare at the same time. So it's kind of a, instead of that, we got a, that kind of action going on. And then also, uh, when I sink back into the groove, I will sometimes change the bass drum pattern up a little bit, maybe dance around the snare as I call it, do a couple hits before the snare, maybe a couple hits after, but instead of just coming down on a close hi-hat, I will uh, open a hi-hat for every hit, so instead of I might go like that. It changes, it just changes the whole vibe. It's something I really like doing. I use it in the music I write uh, with my group, Seventh Rise. Uh, it's just, uh, um, it's a very, um, it's a very nice accent. So, um, so, and you'll see uh, that I'll also throw some what we call single stroke rolls, which is uh, just right, left, right, left, right, left. Um, and I do that uh, just to help warm my hands up as well. Um, do the single stroke roll uh, and end the roll with a crash on the cymbal with, uh, with the kick drum hit and then right back to the groove. And again, it's about doing this for two, three, four minutes at a time. Obviously today for our time restraints here on video, uh, we're, we're just gonna do a portion of it for you to kind of show you what, what I do. Um, hopefully you can take some some nuggets from it per se, take the good stuff that you like and maybe start throwing it in uh, with your warm-up uh, routines because uh, it's always a good idea to do this each and every day, be consistent with it. Change it up a little bit, but the, but again, the same the idea is the same, is just to, to get your body warmed up and ready for the job at hand. So uh, without further ado, here it is. Alright guys, here we go. This is going to be um, 
warm-up exercise number one. Um, as always, we're going to be using the click. I got it uh, tapped in at 160 beats a minute. I highly suggest uh, starting at a lower tempo uh, just to get everything going, and then as you increase in your ability with endurance and everything else, just gradually increase it, and you'll see that it uh, uh, becomes a lot of fun to do. So um, here we go. All right, guys, that was uh, the first warm-up lesson uh, or the first warm-up routine, that is, that I like using on a daily basis. Again, it's uh, really designed to kind of help get my right foot, anyways, in sync with everything else. Now, as you can see, there was uh, some uh, individual or some uh, uh, single-stroke rolls in there along with some hits on the cymbals, that, and I do that on, on purpose. I try to get everything locked in nice and tight. Uh, the cymbal hits locked in with the bass drum hits. Um, the upbeat hits with the snare and hi-hat opening up, little things like that. Again, it's attention to detail, making sure that each and every note has a value and you play it for that value. On this second routine, uh, again, it's more centered around um, the bass drum, but it's also going to be tying in with eighth notes on the hi-hat. I'm going to be doing eighth notes on the hi-hat along with eighth notes on the kick drum, but I'm going to be adding a double in there before each snare hit. So on the last example, per se, we were doing... This go around, you know, and I just had the quarter notes on the hat. This time around, it's going to be. Okay, so we're throwing in a double before the snare hit. And uh, again, that's going to help develop, uh, develop more foot technique, a little bit more confidence with your bass drum, uh, and some strength in there to help, you know, build that power in there. And again, doing the eighth notes on the hat. It's what later in the lesson you're going to hear me refer back to this as the TOG approach. TOG being short for together. We're going to have the, the kick drum and the hi-hat synced up together hitting at the exact same time. Not or It's going to be right on every hit. And then throwing our snare drum down on the two and four, uh, nailing that sucker home. So, uh, And again, with this exercise, take some liberties. If you have some fills and whatnot that you like to practice, throw them in there. For the purpose of this lesson, uh, you're going to see me just stick with the basic concept and switch back and forth possibly from the, from the hi-hat to then going to the ride cymbal with some crash cymbal work in there as well. But again, this is the second uh, warm-up routine that I like doing uh, going into a rehearsal. Again, it uh, just helps me get more centered on the kit and uh, gets my foot warmed up, my hands warmed up, and ready to go. So here we go. All right, guys, here we go. We're going to do uh, warm-up lesson number two. Uh, again with the metronome, going to be doing uh, this one at 130 beats a minute. Play around with it, um, see what uh, really kind of pushes your uh, forearm muscles and your leg muscles and this and that. Back off a little bit maybe and then increase it. Just mess with it on a daily basis, but here we go.
All right, guys, so that was, uh, I guess, example two, you'd call it, on the warm-up routine. Again, a real basic idea. Uh, locked in with the metronome, keeping the eighth notes on the hi-hat, eighth notes on the kick drum, but throwing a double in there before the snare, two and four on the snare. Um, if Hopefully you could hear and see uh, the conviction that I was playing each pattern with and each pass on, uh, because again, that's going to be so important in your development. Uh, taking simple things like this and putting it into a songwriting context or a concert context where you're coming in playing some songs that may already be recorded but you're listening to them to learn the parts. Uh, these type of exercises will help uh, and aid you in uh, putting your own kind of stamp on it and uh, also build more strength, endurance, and confidence behind the kit. So uh, hope you uh, enjoyed this um, short but sweet intense lesson on some warm-up routines and remember no matter what your routine of rehearsal is like one day a week three days a week five days a week whatever it is make that time count even if it's just 10 15 minutes here and there make it count because i promise you it will add up in the long run and you will see results come from that uh that hard work you know uh, again what you put into it is what you're going to get out of it and uh, don't get lost in thinking, well, is this really going to help me? Is this really going to improve this? Is this going to help me uh, play this or that? And, it, and again, it all bases itself on the kind of music you play. You know, the kind of music I play hones in on a lot of this uh, type patterns. So it works for me. Whereas a thrash drummer, someone who does a lot of crazy double bass stuff, his warm-up routine may be a little bit different. Going to obviously involve more double bass action. A jazz drummer is going to have more cymbal action, possibly on the ride so on and so forth. So it, it's whatever's appropriate for the type of music that you like to play. So again, thanks. I appreciate your time and uh, please send us some feedback. We'd love to uh, hear from you and um, have a great day. Alright guys, again uh, we're going to be doing Old Faithful, a uh, field that I uh, nicknamed uh, Old Faithful years ago. Um, again, we're going to be starting out at 80 beats per minute, so here we go. So that was at 80 beats per minute. Now we're going to jump it up to 120 and uh, obviously a faster tempo. And when you move up into the faster tempos, again, I said it's, it, you know, even for myself, I noticed it's, you can get a little sloppy with it at times. Watch the space in those hits and make sure that each note counts. Here we go. at 120 beats per minute um, just a good old old faithful feel as you saw in that also I think it's important to point out take some liberties with it uh, as you can see on that last one I did some doubles on the snare so that's an option uh, play around with it but the idea is Make sure to keep all that nice and tight, but also have the space in there, and uh, you'll be good to go. So again, just spend some time with it, and uh, when you put that in, in the right spot, where it's supposed to be, where it feels right, everybody in the band's going to turn around and go, yeah. So again, I appreciate your time. Thanks.